Hello. Well, as I said last time, I want to try and diversify what I talk about with films. Um, I thought about talking about a movie that I'm, I, I am not fond of, that I have often talked about not being fond of, but never really gave a lot of reasons. I might have gave a few, but those were really repeated. Um, here, though, I'm going to try and give a good reason um, as to why I'm not fond of this film. And why also, sort of overall, I'm not that fond of this filmmaker. Now, of course, if you you know that if you've seen the title, you know what it is, what it's talking about. What I'm talking about, if you can't even talk right now, that's great. Great video. Uh, and if you've seen any of the other videos I've made, you know I'm not happy with the fact this film beat a particular film from a franchise that I am very, um, fond of, so, yeah. And that is, of course, Annie Hall. Annie Hall won Best Picture and Director and Screenplay over Star Wars, the original, you know, Episode 4 now. And before I get to talking about it, I want to give some backstory. If for anybody who has not heard me talk about this before, essentially, I, um, you know, I've seen some films that have beat other films for, like, Best Picture and other major categories at the Academy Awards that... You know, I, I, I don't agree with that decision, but I'm okay with it. You know, I don't entirely agree. You know, I don't think that film should have won, or that person should have won that category. Somebody else should have, or another film should have won. But the overall, you know, at the end of it, I have no problem with the film I would have preferred not winning. Because, you know, it was to a film that was good. An example, um, I love Jaws. I've talked about that maybe quite a bit here, or at least as much as I can. Uh, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest beat Jaws for Best Picture. To me, uh, Jaws was a better film, but One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest is a fine film. It's a great film, and I have no problem with it beating Jaws. I may not agree, but I have no problem with that uh, decision. Same with Taxi Driver losing to Rocky the following year. I love Rocky, but I think Taxi Driver is a better movie. Um, that's just my preference. You don't have to agree with me on that or the previous example or even the topic at hand regarding of the film I'm going to talk about. So, with all that in mind, you know, I'm not a fan of Woody Allen. I find himself, the guy, he's just annoying, I think. He's very, I don't know, he's just, he's, he's too neurotic. His character's not just that he plays, but the characters in his films are, are really the same. They're just in different situations really every time. So that's, I don't find to be too original other than the setting and situations are. But, you know, you've got the neurotic male lead and the strong independent woman that uh, may or may not have an, uh, A relationship of some sort with the main character, you know, at some point in the film. 
Now, of course, this sort of scenario I've described isn't in every single Woody Allen film, but this does happen quite a bit with his characters. And I do enjoy some of his films. I and I'm going to list some of the examples in this video because I actually wrote a review for this film. I did not give it a positive review, but I gave a review um, on the website Letterboxd. Um, I might leave a link in the description, or not in the description, but in the I might pin the pin it in the comments. Um, I sort of go off and say. I sort of. I don't know. I made some jokes, or what I could be seen as jokes with this review, though I'm not that funny, I don't think, regarding writing stuff like this. And I don't really write reviews on that other web, that website. I really just wrote a praise for Star Wars and how much I love it. So there you go. There's my contrast for you know, but you know I don't really do reviews. I talk about movies, yes, but you know I don't give ratings, which seems to be a big thing with reviews. I've never done that, and I don't really want to do that. I, I, you can kind of you might be able to guess what. I would rate a movie, depending on how much I talk about it and how much I'm fond of the film. Um, and, you know, I, I always try to, on this channel, be fairly positive and not talk about stuff I don't like. Though I have at times, but usually those, per those films pertain to a franchise that I like. You know, Star Wars or Batman. I might talk about a film or two here that I'm not fond of in that, in either of those franchises because I love those franchises quite a bit. And it's, you know, disappointing when I see a film, a franchise that I enjoy, not be uh, as up to par as I think it should be or really could have been, should have been. So with that, you know, uh, this is going to be my real first negative discussion of a film in review form from this website. Because I'm like, you know, when I, re when I really did decide to do this, I'm like, you know, I did write this review once. Why don't I just talk instead of just going on about whatever about the film which could go on to like become like a rant which I don't want I'll just read from there and just let that speak for itself maybe at the end I'll add some stuff here and there but yeah so let me begin all right well, if this rate of view may contain spoilers, because you're, you're warned if you've never seen any Hall. Um, okay. Any Hall. An unfunny, whiny, pretentious Woody Allen film that is just like most of the films in his filmography. Right off the bat, I'm real... Yeah. It's nice. Alan does his usual shtick of being a dweeby, neurotic Jew from New York. Don't take offense to me putting Jew in there, because he often makes it a point of, when he's in his films, he's Jewish. You know, he, he, it's not my fault that he, that's in his films a lot. He, he does sort of make that a point. He wants you to know his characters are Jewish, so don't. Don't be hating on me there because of that. I know some people will hear me say that, might read the review, and get upset, but it's just what Woody Allen is. 
Probably should have saved that for the very end, but I wanted to get that out of the way for up front. Because some people might, you know, click away as I kept going. So anyway, he does zero mistake of being New York. Which is the only part he can play. Because it's himself. And talks about the relationship between himself and his now ex-girlfriend, Candy Hall, played by Dan Keaton. Throughout the film, we see all the major beats in the relationship, so we can see why it ended up the way it did. Alan's character, named Alvy, always has to show how much of an intellectual he is, like Alan in real life does, and just makes an ass out of himself. There are some witty Alan films I enjoy. Midnight in Paris, Radio Days, Shadows and Fog, Zellig are amongst the few I like. Plus, I heard from many that this film is the best of his entire career. So, hearing that and, not, and also having a low expectation to it due to me not being fond of his films in general, I went in with an open mind. I mean... He's made some films I enjoyed, so I figured watching this couldn't hurt. All I can say is, that was 93 minutes I will never get back in my life. Yes, 93 minutes of my life I will never get back, people. Yeah. It could seem to be, might be seen as exaggeration. I'll get to that later on. This film won four Oscars at the 1977 Academy Awards, one of which went to Diane Keaton. I like to think she won... <sighs> well, I, I like to think she won for putting up with Woody Allen, though I'm sure that's not the case. The other three Oscars of the film... All beat Star Wars in the categories of Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Original Screenplay. When the Academy chose to give this film a top prize over the movie most would put at the top of the list of the best film of 1977, I believe that was around the time the Academy began to honor films that many people either didn't hear about or care about. Annie Hall seems to be seem to have fallen into the latter category. Another thing that baffled me in terms of awards was Alan being nominated for Best Actor. He lost, but I'm still surprised that he got nominated for acting in this, since he's essentially playing himself. Yeah, it wouldn't be easy to play yourself in a film. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't be too easy to play yourself in a film you do to rendering lines and doing your best to say them convincingly but still Alan didn't do anything special in this film that another actor couldn't do if you if you just recasted Alvy with another actor of the 70s I think Alan's nomination could have gone to Mark Hamill in Star Wars as he was believable in the part where you don't see Hamill playing himself you believe he was actually acting like Luke Skywalker was, which is what an actor should do, and not attempt to act like yourself. Unless you're playing yourself in a film, which is what Woody Allen always does. Allen doesn't have range, since all the characters he plays are just himself. Nowadays, you don't hear people talking much about any hall, unless someone's a Woody Allen fan, or if he's baffled as to how this beat Star Wars at the Oscars, of the three main categories of one. Star Wars is a film that broke new grounds and changed the way films were made and marketed. Star Wars inspired filmmakers like Christopher Nolan and Peter Jackson. Annie Hall didn't seem to do much for films from what I've seen, but maybe it did. Perhaps a fan of Woody Allen could tell me and you how this film changed filmmaking and cinema in general. 
unless you're a Woody Allen fan and you haven't seen this film yet, I don't know if you if this movie is for you. Unless, of course, you're adventurous and curious to watch Woody Allen whine for 93 minutes. I say skip it, but that's just me. And that's my review. And granted, I didn't go much into the plot, but well, I kind of told you up front there wasn't really much to do. It's just Woody Allen's trying to be funny. And I remember I was really bored watching it. I'm like, oh, come on, let's just get funny. That was literally a thought in my head. Uh, granted, it was a bit more vulgar, I will say. Uh, that expletive was used between when the when the and it does get funny. Yeah, yeah. This and does. There's there's a word that was put in there that I didn't put here, but anyway, it, it uh, he just also just really whines and. And, he, and, and Diane Keaton doesn't really do anything that special. I mean, you know, she's Diane Keaton. You know, she's, I don't know. She's, she's not horrible, but she's not great. I guess they just really liked it. Diane Keaton in those days, so. I don't know what to really say. Yeah. Um, It's just Woody Allen's presence is really what ruins the film for me. Uh, and a lot of his films. I mean, some of his films I mentioned, like Zelig and... Oh, come on, where are they? Shadows and Fog. And Radio Days. I like the Radio Days. He's just the narrator. But his... He is just so annoying in this film because he tries to make himself look like the biggest intellectual around. No one is smarter than him. And if he, if somebody seems to present the threat that they are smarter than him or sort of challenge him in any way, he has to go into this mode where... He he has to make sure that person knows I'm I'm smarter than you. You know you you're not that smart. You 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 have brains like the size of a gnat's head. You know, an a gnat's brain even. You know, it's too small to comprehend what he's talking about here. He's he, he's so smart. I don't know. That's my Woody Allen impression. It probably sucks. But, uh, I haven't done that in a while, so. But he's just so annoying. I'm just like, shut up, shut up, shut up. It, 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 you know why your relationship with her ended? It's really because you're, it, you're a whiny dweeb. That's why you have to try and prove you're smart. They keep seeing this documentary over and over. And it's like, and she wants to see some other movie. Mm -hmm. Like, she's so bored of watching this constantly. I'm like, yeah, that would be too late. I really think he, uh, she left you, and now you're just here saying all this to the audience to try and cover the fact that you got dumped, mm. and you're just flabbergasted, and you're, tr you're taken aback, and you're trying to truly figure out what happened. Yeah, it's just, that's, a, that's Woody Allen being himself. That's really all I can say. It's just, if you like that, hey, you know. Again, I was just say you you can like that. Um, if you like this film, fine. But I don't. Um, and I don't ever want to watch it again. I got so bored. I was relieved and happy that the ninety sub minutes was over. I was like, oh. I was like that. I was actually on the verge of falling asleep, too. I, I was about to uh, pass out for a good while, take a nap. I guess if I was really, if I needed to go to sleep or take a nap, 
I could always watch Annie Hall. So uh, maybe there you go. That, that, maybe that, that could help with me, but I don't know. And again, when I watched, I was hoping it would be good. And that while I wouldn't agree with it being beating Star Wars in the major award categories it lost to, I could at least, you know, okay, uh, I can see why it won, because this and this and this. Well, I couldn't see why it won. It was Woody Allen being Woody Allen, so I'm at a loss. Um, Diane Keaton put up with him and won an Academy Award, so. Uh, I'm sure some people will disagree with me here. That's fine. Uh, some say it's the best romantic comedy. Uh, uh, no, I... I would say The Holiday is a superior comedy. You know, I'm not that fond of romantic comedies in general, but... I saw that one years ago, and I didn't mind it. Then again, I think the cast had a good deal with it. Uh, Jude Law, Kate Winslet, uh, Jack Black, Cameron Diaz, I believe. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know, really. <sighs> Excuse me. Recalling all the thoughts of... Rewatching Annie Hall. It's both frightening and tiring all at once. So honestly, I'm just. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I'm not fond of this film. I uh, don't want to watch it again. I can always do the desire to. But if you do like Woody Allen, you don't like. His films, you'll like this film, you'll love this film if it's your favorite film of all time. That's great. To me, it's one of the most boring, annoying films I've ever seen. And I gave it a chance. I did. I went in hoping to be entertained because that's what I do for every movie I see, even if I don't like it. I'm like, I want to. I want to make sure, or I want to, not make sure, I want to enjoy this film. I want to have an enjoyable time, you know, I'm entertained, I find the characters interesting, and the plot fascinating. I want all of this to happen that you would want, all this stuff to happen to make a good film, to make an entertaining experience, and for me... Annie Hall was one of those that was one of the worst experiences of my life when it comes to watching films. And yeah, I, it's just annoying. So that's all I have to say, man, woman, people, whoever is watching this. That's really all I have to say. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be re repeating myself quite soon. So I should probably stop this before that happens. So, yeah. I hope you all have a good day. Hope you all have a good week and a good weekend. Hope you enjoy this deviation from the norm. And me talking about a film that I'm not fond of. That's not part of a franchise I enjoy. And until next time... Just, you know, uh, keep on going, and I hope you all had a good 4th of July. Uh, and to those who aren't American, I hope you had a great uh, Thursday. Uh, so take care, and I'll see you next time.